Hi, my name is Robert Manuel. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we will be discussing Camworks Wire EDM. Uh, some of the things we'll talk about is just the, the some of the pro uh, features, such as uh, this thing everyone's probably heard of, a solid G code. We'll talk a little bit about patterns. Um, we're going to go a little outside of the box on this one, however, and also cover some premium features as well. So with that said, we'll get started. Okay, so this is Wire EDM Pro items. I'm just going to drag this part over, double click on it just to get it where I want to work on it at. And from here, I'm going to turn on my add-ins. And this will be Wire EDM Pro 2023. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go in here and create a coordinate system. This is just a standard SOLIDWORKS command, and I'm going to use that bottom left-hand corner right there. It looks good. And I'm going to drag this bar out just a little bit. Go to my YRDM tools. I'm going to change my machine. And I'm going to change this to a Agi Charmi Cut350 Pro. From here, I'm going to create my origin from that coordinate system. And I want to have my stock follow that same origin because it could follow a different origin of stock depending on how I want to machine a spe specific part. And from there, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go over to EDM, hit solid to G code. And this is my code for the P350 Pro. It's a .json file. It has all the data in the file already. And it also has the ISO data, which is the actual geometry data in the file as well. I'll close that out. As far as machine settings go, uh, pardon me, I can go to the EDM settings and I can look at uh, a particular cut database. This is going to an AG over here. Um, type of entities, whether they're XY, UV, um, or, you know, basically four axis entities like GO2, GO3s. Typical number of skims. Submerged machining. These are all just basic things that you typically do on your machine. Then I'm going to go to the EDM setup. It's typical wire diameter. Typical wire type. Um, this will help out with things like cutting conditions and obviously the diameter of your wire. Uh, over here, auto threading, I can, I, I might turn on auto trim leads. So if it's too big a lead for the part, it'll automatically trim them for me. Maximum taper angle, minimum taper angle. Uh, stop approach and release on glue stops or stop on contour. And then the glue stop process, whether it's a, uh, Stop approach release or knock out if it's real thin stuff. You just want to twist them out. You can do that as well. Um, other things like search for start holes and whatnot are also inside of the software. Uh, posting information. I usually don't have to mess with this much. You know, just depending on how you want to post uh, particular things like punches and dies, whether or not you want to do the complete feature or have it rough the entire plate, then come back and cut the glue stops on the entire plate and then skim everything or or whatever order you want. Um, I usually have app, app put comments on if I want to put comments in here at the beginning of the program. You can also put comments in at the actual program level itself, which is underneath this EDM plane. So if I wanted to go in here and modify this, I could come in here and say, uh, user comments. It'll give you a place for your rough, and this one has three skims, so it gives me comments for three skims. Um, EDM information, you know, what, do you want glue stops? Do you want to cut at glue stops? Do you want to 
output glue stops? Do you want to output skims? Maybe you just want to run all your refs at night and you don't want to worry about it. You can just set it up to just run all your refs. It doesn't care. Cutting conditions. I'm not showing anything right now. So I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to say search cutting conditions. Agi locks down their cutting conditions. Now, if you're on a Mitsubishi, they do not. Mitsubishi doesn't care what you do. You can put in any, any kind of cutting condition that you want. Agi's a little more um, temperamental about it. They like their cutting conditions and they want you to work with it. So this is the machining height, the um, uh, options for, for cutting it, whether it's plain, step down, step down recovery, or um, Sherlock. I'll be honest with you, these may be indicative of uh, more of the edgy stuff. I'm more of a mitts guy. So uh, amount of steps, RA factors. So if you want to just come in and say, I want this thing to cut at an RA 0.3, uh, it looks like it automatically set this one to speed instead of precision. Um, working type, whether it's open or slot. Once again, I'm not I'm familiar with that one. I'm going, to, I'm going to hit generate cut data, and it generates this cut data for my machine. And I'll say, OK. I'll go back over here, edit. And now I have cut data in here, and I can link this to a database as well. So that, that cut data is now in there. Uh, if you want to manually add geometry, like maybe I just want to cut this out here. I'm not worried about going around the whole outside. You know, I can come in here on this plane, right click, and just do a two axis open. Right click again, geometry, and I'll pick that face. And there's just that face, cutting. Um, there are other things that you can do. For example, let's say you have a part that has patterns on it. This can be kind of a pain in the, in, in the rump if you have to program each one of these individually. So inside of Camworks Wire EDM Pro, you can come down here and you can check patterns find patterns. This is actually just a flyout data grid for everything up here. There's a flyout data grid that you can work from down here. It just makes things faster to work with. This is also where you identify all your feature types from. So if I want to find an inner, which I do, I would have that checked. I come up here, solid to G code. Outputs my code, hit the plus key. You'll notice I've got one cut cutting all of these at once. So I can edit every one of these at the same time. There's other things you can do. For example, you could come in here and you could say, I want to do a sketch and I want to do a start hole. We'll highlight that and get our start point, or our center point, pardon me. Put a dimension on there. Uh, looks like we might be in metric. I didn't even pay attention to that. Oh, I put that 0.25 instead of 2.5. My bad. 2.5. So we'll make that 2.5. Back on my plane, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this start hole to 2.0. And I'm just going to hit solid to G code again because it's easy enough to do. I could also go in and just say find holes or find start points or, you know, as well. But oh, well. Looks like we have something going on here. Oh, no, there it is. It's got it. I, I didn't pay attention to that because I probably wouldn't do my lead in lead out this way. I most likely would come in here. And I'm just going to make this one a little bit easier to see. Lead in lead out. Put 
perpendicular blend. Yeah, I still don't like that one. I'm going to say select point. I'm going to pick that point. And I'm going to change this to point blend. Here, let's just see if that just does that without actually picking that point again. There we go. Something a little more like that. And of course, everything I'm doing there goes through everything else. Uh, as far as changing machines go, it's very simple. You go over, choose the machine, choose the, the type, choose the actual machine itself. And it's ready to post for that machine too. Uh, there are some premium features. All right, so diff different types of premium features that we can handle would be like color, for example. So if I bring this color out, what this does is over here in your color systems, under colors, user technologies, we've got an Agi Cut 350 Pro. We've got an Agi Vision, Charmy, Mitz, Sodic. Um, and these can all be made uh, for you. Currently, we don't have the user interface to build them ourselves, but they're working on doing that for us so that we can build them ourselves. And from here, you just drag and drop these colors. Now, this one here is probably set to training. Um, and I'm just, I don't know, we'll drag a color over here and we'll just make that a, on, on a face. Over on this side, I'm going to go to that training machine. I'm going to click on my plane. Outer, find pattern, find use type. We'll do auto level. Solid G code. So what this does is it actually programs the part off of these colors and these colors are set up one cut, two cut, three cuts, land cut, skim cuts, taper cuts. And they put the tool path on and then in your associated post, it will say one cut, four cuts, two cuts, four cuts, two cuts, one cut. So it's much easier to track and see what's going on. Now, another thing you can do is decals. And under decals, you can choose uh, things like start at the feature end or the line end, arc end, the, uh, the start, the middle, uh, but you can also do stop types. So first off, if I wanted to start this on a particular end, you know, if I pick this face, it would start over here and just burn around this part. But I'm more concerned at this point is to stop at middle. And if I take that stop at middle and I put it on this face and you can map it and make it different sizes so it looks pretty and whatnot. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and just check that. I'll go over here to my camera tree. I'm gonna look at my plane and I wanna make sure that find use types is checked. I also, because there is a tapered wall on this already created in SolidWorks, that means I'm using SolidWorks features to create it, I'm going to choose Find Auto Level. If I use my plane, it won't intersect both of these features. So Find Auto Level scans the entire part. From there, I'm going to hit Solid to G-Code. And there's my code. And I'm just going to look over here and I've got, um, first off, it shows me what I'm cutting. Tapered cut one, uh, land four skims, uh, two inside cuts, four cuts, two cuts, outside cut. 
you'll also notice that there is a stop point in here that actually this will burn around to here and stop. Okay. Um, and the, that should cover pretty much the, uh, the labels. Program. And there's a list of them in the help file of what changes and what doesn't change. So it just makes it easier to change a lot of things at one time as well. Other things that exist in here, there is, um, I'm going to talk about this, but I'm not going to show it because of time. Well, here, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Let's close this out. Um, let's go to form tool. There's a form tool in here. And what this is specific for is for someone that does not uh, want to take the time to draw all the geometry. You can go in here instead and say form tool, draw out the sketch that you want to work with. Go to geometry. Grab that sketch. And then edit that. And down inside of here, you can set all of the thickness, the, you know, the angles. Uh, let's see, side taper angle, 0.5. Uh, top break, one. Now, I don't know the exact settings on this one, so I'll do my best. But, and you can preview that, and then that will create basically the, the rake of a tool and create your own, your own tool from it. So that's in premium. Um, variable land. Variable land, um, it takes and... I'm going to do a two axis in geometry tangency Oh, actually I wanted to do one other thing to that. Turn variable land on. So what variable land does is it keeps the machine tool perpendicular to that face all the way throughout the cut. So that if it were straight up and down, you're gonna have a lot more, lot more wire hanging out here on this cut as to where it, if it's tilted down perpendicular to it, it's gonna cut more true throughout this, this um, sweeping, part model, you know, where it comes down, keeps perpendicular all the way throughout the cut. So that's what variable land does. There's also on contour. Remember, these are all premium features that I'm showing at this point now. On contour is a great way just to move around stuff or get, get through stuff. So if you come in here and you say, um, On contour, geometry. Here you can use points. And lines. Just to walk around stuff and cut through stuff. So, here you can set different little power conditions and whatnot, because basically it's just walking around this point. Uh, it can be used to cut parts in half, you know, cut slugs in half where you need to get into them, or avoid fixtures or things of that nature as well.
Uh, let's see here. That's decals on contour, form tool, variable land, and color. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the angular entry. Angular entry allows you to pick two points, top and bottom, at opposites, you know, to where your lead in or lead out will lead into it at a specific angle. That's all there is. So, all right. Um, probably one other thing that I'll show. This is in Pro. And that is a four axis part. And that's just to show off the fact that in any other cam system that I've ever used, I would have to project all of these surfaces up to the top surface here in order to get an accurate cut. And in this case, I'm actually burning this part upside down just so you can see the clarity of it. You would really burn this thing upside down like this so the slugs would drop, but I'm just doing it like this just so you can see everything easier. From here, the first thing you'd wanna do is just make sure that you're plain, which you can turn on right here and you can move it from here. I just wanna make sure that little dude is somewhere where I want it to be falling in those features. The next thing I would do is I would look and see what I'm finding. I'm finding outer, nope. Finding inner, yes. Holes, yes. I'm not patterned, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, open tabs, and I, nope, I'm not worried about any of that. So I'm gonna hit solid to G-code. Now keep in mind, this is fairly complex 4-axis geometry. So this is on a, a mitt uh, using UV vectors. And if I turn that off, these are my tool paths. On my part. Uh, as far as simulation goes, we use Predator to simulate. Okay, so, so this is a square. Let's change that. Let's go in here instead and let's go to our stock. Edit. We're going to say on Z and we're going to make this a cylinder. That looks a little closer to it and we'll hit play. And we can speed this up and slow it down from over here. Wow, that must be rocket fast. And at any time you can stop this and you can come over here and pick chip removal. I like to pick what I want to keep, right click and say remove unselected to remove those chips out of there. All right, so basically we went in and we started out in WireDM Pro, showed uh, basic interface, select geometry, uh, move the work plane up, your coordinate system, um, and solid to G-code. We then did some patterns, uh, just to show off some of the patterning stuff. We went to premium, and in premium, we uh, 
found descriptions by colors, by decals. Uh, we did groups to, to practice grouping, uh, form tools, on contour to move around freely without having geometry other than points and lines, variable land to keep things perpendicular to the cut. And then we came back to Pro and just did a, a four axis part with a very non-conforming cup on the face that would be difficult to do on most systems for four axis simultaneous. Thank you very much and have a great day.